Love this podcast? Support this show through the ACAST supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give, and there's no regular commitment. Just click the link in the show description to support now. Before we get started with another great edition of the Duke Rosslyn podcast, I do want to let you know, Zencaster.com. That's right, Zencaster.com. They are, without a doubt, my favorite website to head over to for all of these great conversations that you hear on the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. Superior quality and sound. Also, they have a great uh, video option as well if you need to record your videos. But the best part about it is the files are all split separately into MP3s. So you can edit them separately, you can put them together, do whatever you got to do. The main idea is Zencaster. Zencaster.com. That's Z E N C A S T R for all of your podcasting, video conferencing, even if you just wanted to uh, have a great conversation with your loved ones. All your needs there online for communication. Zencaster has you covered. That's right. Sisters and brothers, stop the presses. Brad Shepard is back with a new podcast. Check this commercial out. He's taking the gloves off. He's talking in depth about pro wrestling, sports, pop culture, trending topics on social media, politics, and his crazy life. He's uncensored. He's unapologetic. He's media personality Brad Shepard. And he's unleashed. Brad Shepard unleashed. Exclusively on Hameen Media Group. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. My brothers, my sisters. We have made it to December 2021. Oh my goodness. We are on the road to Christmas. We are on the road to finishing up Hanukkah, Festivus, whatever you Pastafarians uh, celebrate, and all the other good stuff there. (laughs) Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling, the show about pro wrestling and everything else. Listen, I hope you... And all of your loved ones are doing well. I hope that you are safe. You're as warm as you need to be, as cold as you prefer to be. You know what I mean? I mean, I just look, I love December. Okay. This is my favorite time of year. And and not just because I have a birthday coming up or because everyone's dealing with the, the holidays, but just in general, I just, I love the idea of wrapping up the year. And looking forward to what's on the horizon for the new year. You know, that's just something that I enjoy all the time there. So I'm glad that we made it. Okay. This week, I got a special guest lined up for you. Literally, this is right on time here. My man, Zach Etter. You know, he is the CEO and mental performance coach at Holistic Athlete. Okay, this is an organization that helps out athletes, helps out uh, people who deal with performance in general, you know, just get their their thoughts and emotions organized and keep them on track there. So this is right on time for all of you pro wrestlers that listen to the show. I think you're going to enjoy this. Uh, He has some some great tips and information just to help you stay grounded and, and stay focused, especially during this time of year where you're not only wrapping up what's happening now, but you're looking ahead to what's going to be happening in in the new year. You know, hopefully it's all going to be positive, but it starts with believing that your life can take a positive direction and stay there, right? Anyone can, can get to a point, but how do you maintain that point? You know, we all need help. We all need a reset button. We all need a focus button in order to just kind of color within the lines here. And that's exactly why I wanted Zach to come on the show. So you're going to hear from him a little bit later. But before we get to any of that, I want to give some shout outs. I'm going to start off with Maria from Beat'em Up Wrestling. 
Remember Maria? You know, her and, and her husband, Jacinto, great folks there, great friends of the show. Maria is celebrating a birthday this week. And, you know, they, they just had a baby as well. Beautiful, beautiful baby girl. So shout out to Maria. Definitely give all my love and best to you, the little one. Jacinto, what's up, my man? You know, those are my folks right there. So once again, happy birthday. Shout out Maria of Beat 'em Up Wrestling. We had a lot of birthdays this week. I mean, Danielle Williams, who legitimately is one of the nicest people I've ever had the pleasure of interacting with. Huge wrestling fan. Really, really sweet person. So shout out to Danielle. We have a Mop Boy. Folks, remember Mop Boy? You know, Scar Rubin. Good guy there. The indie wrestler. Shout out to him. He just celebrated a birthday this week as well. Uh, and a whole bunch of other folks. So happy birthday to everyone who has celebrated a birthday over the past month. You know, the, the train keeps rolling for sure. And um, I also want to give a shout out to our man, Chef Manny Fresh. You know, Chef Manny, he spent some time in, in the hospital recently because his body needed some rest. Guy was just going, going, going. And it happens to the best of us. You know, if you don't give your body enough rest, it will shut itself down to get it. So Chef Manny, you know, he's, he's a chef. He's a wrestler. He's a father. He's a husband. He is a guy that donates his time to others. That body was like, listen, man, I need to, I need to rest. So Chef Manny's on the mend, though. He's back home. He's, he's in his spirits are high. And, you know, he and uh, Ashley, they have a new baby as well. So. The family's getting ready for the holidays. Uh, beautiful pictures for Thanksgiving that I saw there. So again, best to Chef Manny. Best to the family over there, for sure. Shout out to uh, Akia. Akia Patterson. She and her boyfriend are expecting, which is great. So there's a bun in the oven there. You know, Akia is a, a big wrestling fan in her own right. Big supporter of uh, the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. She and her mom, Beatrice, you know, B. So shout out to the Patterson family and the bun in the oven there. It's going to be a future world champion, hopefully. That's right. That's right. You know, and shout out to you, everybody listening right now, wherever you are in the world, I appreciate you. You know, you, you've supported Duke Loves Wrestling for over five years, and we just continue to grow because of you. And I don't take that lightly. I really appreciate that. And just remember, at Duke Loves Wrestling on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram. You can send me a message, Duke Loves Wrestling at gmail.com. In fact, you know, next week is going to be my annual International Duke Day, my birthday episode. So anyone who wants to send a birthday greeting, you know, I like to play those every year, which it gets a little out of control, but it's fun. Uh, feel free, feel free. Send me a voice message, Duke Loves Wrestling at gmail.com, and I will absolutely play it next week. So keep that in mind there, everybody. Also, shout out to our man, uh, uh, Scotty. Scotty Richardson over there at Wrestler Weekly. You know, I know that they were celebrating the anniversary of the passing of Coach, uh, Scotty's dad. So just want to give my love to the Richardson family over there. Great folks. Great folks for sure. A little later, I'm going to be talking about something very serious. Responsibility. Responsibility and, and the challenges that decision makers face when it comes to making the right moves because you're responsible for the lives and the well-being and the development of others. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. I'm actually going to end the show on that note because I got a lot to say, especially in, in the wake of what we saw this week um, from Cody Rhodes. You know, he and Andrade having a match and there was a flaming table spot, which Definitely was very dangerous and, and, you know, Cody definitely has some serious burns on his back, but it could have been a lot worse than what it was. So I got I got some thoughts on that that I'm going to share a little later, but I definitely want to get into my conversation with our man, Zach Etter. He's got a lot to say and, and it's some good stuff. And, and I especially for all you athletes out there, for all you pro wrestlers, for all you mixed martial arts practitioners, you're going to want to hear this. So. Let me, let me make sure I get myself ready, though. Hold on. That's right. That's right. I had to take a sip of my uh, Panera Bread coffee there. I got an iced coffee today. You know, once again, Panera, they have that Panera Plus program. You get unlimited coffees or hot tea every single day. 
you know, it's it's a sh- it's a very small fee. I think right now they got it knocked down to eight ninety nine per month. But if you sign up now, you will get your first month absolutely free. So the way that it works is uh, every two hours you can pop into your local Panera Bread and you can get yourself a fresh hot or iced coffee any size. And of course, you know, the, the, the sweeteners and the milks, uh, all that stuff's on the house. And if you, you know, don't feel like a coffee, you can go to a hot tea instead. But every two hours, you get yourself a, a hot tea or a hot or iced coffee every single day. Panera Plus, that's the name of the program. Panera Bread is the name of the location. And hey, you know, pick up a, a, a pastry or pick up a lovely sandwich or salad. I mean, Panera really, they knock it out of the park with all their stuff there. And I highly recommend it, folks. It's something that I partake in on a regular basis, and I encourage you to do the same thing. So once again, check out Panera Bread. Tell them the Duke sent you. That's right. Okay. Without further ado, my conversation with my man, Mr. Zach Etter. My name is Zach Etter. I'm a mental performance coach and also a mental health therapist. And I'm a CEO of my company called Holistic Athlete, which works with athletes and high performers on mental skills that will help them improve their performance, but also mental health to you know, improve their overall well-being and quality of life. The reality for athletes is that athletes, especially at the professional level, suffer from diagnosable mental health disorders at a higher rate than the general public. So just some quick numbers. The general public, one in five adults in America suffer from what can be considered a diagnosable mental health disorder. That's about 20%. And 24% of collegiate athletes do. And about 32% of professional athletes suffer from a mental health diagnosis. So there's typical issues that athletes deal with, just like anyone else, like anxiety, depression, relationship issues, financial insecurity, sexuality. We're all living through a pandemic, right? So there's shared issues, but then there's also issues that are more specific to athletes like, you know, body image issues, performance anxiety, a demanding schedule, time away from their family, being in the public light, you know, the physical toll that comes with playing sports at a high level or, or performing at a high level. And then if we're being honest, there's also issues like performance enhancing drugs, substance use, alcohol use, things that are a little bit more prevalent you know, in the athletic world that are more specific to athletes. So, you know, what I do is, yeah, we want to work on mental skills to make us perform better, you know, to make us better at our job. But reality is if we're not dealing with the off field or off, you know, mat or or off court issues of anxiety, depression, and some of these mood disorders or substance use disorders that can be affecting our performance, then we're not going to do well professionally. We're not going to do well personally, socially. So holistic athlete is about, treating the overall person, the overall holistic person. You know, we all have goals and interests, you know, outside of our jobs that affect us, you know, when we're trying to work. So it's about, you know, approaching health and wellness in a variety of different ways. And that includes mental health therapy. You know, Zach, one of the things that I respect about you is just the fact that you've done a lot of extensive work with entire teams from various sports. And you've, you've actually worked with wrestlers. So like people who have gone on to the Olympics and things of that nature here. So it's a very good mixed bag of different types of uh, clients that you service. Folks who work in the entertainment industry, so not just athletes, but also uh, people who've done some acting and what have you here. I I wonder about something. How does this time of year affect the modern performer, the modern athlete, because we are in the holiday season now. I mean, does this contribute to some of the challenges? Absolutely. You know, I think uh, one of the things I just want to point out you said was about performance. So I don't consider myself a sports psychologist. I consider myself a performance psychologist because whether we're talking about, you know, a wrestler or a football player or an actor or a doctor or a first responder, Right. We're all talking about the same type of skills and mindset that's required to do our job at a high level. So, you know, sticking in the realm of performance, I think that this time of year is particularly difficult for lots of reasons. You know, those of us who, you know, are fortunate to, you know, have people around us and have, you know, family and 
and support, you know, could really enjoy the holidays. But there's a lot of people who have suffered a great deal of loss in their life. And especially in this past year with all of the issues with the pandemic that's come about with financial insecurity and, you know, losing jobs and, and losing loved ones. Uh, this is going to be a, a challenging next couple months for people as we, you know, go into kind of a season where there's a little less sunlight, a little, a little less natural vitamin D. There's a little bit less to do, you know, from a social standpoint or a hobby standpoint. And, you know, if you don't have a job right now and you're struggling, you know, personally and in your relationships, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to get us through these next few months for sure. From your experience, uh, Zach, what, what is the process like? I mean, let's say that a pro wrestler, for example, comes to you and yeah. says, listen, I, I'm, I'm very concerned you know, a lot of my peers are getting laid off uh, or released from their contracts, so to speak. And, you know, I haven't been released yet, but my contract is up uh, next summer and I don't know if I'm going to be re-signed. And if I'm not re-signed, yeah. there's not too many other places to go right now. So I'm, I'm kind of lost. I don't know what to do next. I'm getting a little older. I don't know if I need to go back into the, the, the real world, so to speak, and get a different type of job or if I can stick mm -hmm. through and really continue to, to, to perform in front of the fans and what have you. How do you approach providing services to a person like that? And what's the timeline as far as, you know, expectations for, for progress? When you take someone who's concerned about their job or concerned about the future of their job, I think what you're looking at is not just a professional issue. It's an identity issue. Right. So if you've been wrestling your whole life and this is something that's been a dream of yours and this is something that you've been, you know, working towards and maybe you've had, you know, success in this arena and now that's being threatened. I think a really fair question to, that people ask themselves, if, if I'm not a wrestler, if this is not what I'm going to do, then who am I and what am I and, and how am I going to spend you know, the remainder of my life moving forward. So I'm not talking about waving the white flag professionally or on a, your wrestling career. But I think even if things are going great, even if your career is going great, even if you're making the money that you want and getting the opportunities that you want, it's always a healthy exercise to try to build out our identity to be more than just one thing. You know, and I deal with this a lot with injured athletes, athletes who have career ending injuries or, you know, college athletes who graduate and then enter the workforce and never play sports again. Right. So there's different variations of this. When we lose a part of ourselves, there's grief there. There's loss there. So I think the approach is if that's going to be the, a problem, if finding a job, if, you know, that job security is going to be a problem moving forward, I think the approach would be to just do what we should be doing anyway, which is building out that identity, you know, becoming a more holistic person, having, you know, strengths and interests in other areas. And by the way, you know, these mental skills that we use to improve performance are fantastic because they're really life skills, right? Like we're teaching life skills such as confidence, resilience, emotional resilience regulation, handling adversity, but we're teaching them and practicing them in the vehicle of sports, right? So all of that would help with wrestling. All of that would help with your career, but they're also going to help you in your relationships. They're going to help you in the next chapters of your life, and they're going to help your overall mental health or well-being. So while I'm not discounting that problem, I don't think it's a particularly rare problem. And I think the approach to solving that issue is to do what really should be done anyway by everyone, which is just putting enough time, energy, and effort into resources outside of your job, outside of the one thing that you've been doing to build out that identity. Because we understand that, you know, life is challenging, especially, you know, in this sport that we're competing at. And it could end at any moment. And that has nothing to do with the pandemic or, or loss of job opportunities. We need to be prepared, you know, for moments where we need to change course and we need to be adaptable. But I, I do think in the in an instance where a wrestler's career ends or is or is having challenge getting work, I approach it like losing a loved one or losing someone close to you. It's a big part of you that's, you know, be either being challenged or being taken away. And there's a typical grief process. And to answer your question about, you know, the amount of time it might take to, you know, see some progress, I'd be lying to you if I said there was an objective answer to that. It's really just going to depend on the person. And, you know, the relationship that they have with the, with the counselor or the sports psychologist or the therapist that they're working at. And, you know, I, I, I think that progress can be made really quickly. I think that there's 
changes in perspectives and, you know, different approaches to therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy that can help us reframe our perspective and what we're going through in a more healthy way so that we could really make good decisions about what we need to do moving forward. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm completely dialed into everything that you're saying and, and I support it. I believe in it. I'm a person yeah. that's, um, has gone through therapy for for years of my life, so I, I'm I'm someone that's always uh, supportive of people reaching out to somebody, and you know just just hitting the reset button, so to speak, and 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 having someone help you color within the lines. You know what yeah. I mean? Because a lot of times, if we're just out there, man, we're just making it up as we go along, and right. it's easy when things are going really really well, but when the challenges start coming. Especially as you get older, especially as the competition increases, especially as the opportunities start to lessen, um, it's a lot. It's a lot. And and yeah. speaking to the pro wrestlers in particular, where they're being judged constantly by the audience and by their higher ups and even by their peers, um, that just compounds the issue far more than what the average person is dealing with, right? Absolutely. I mean, there's there's different demographics are more subject to mental health issues for various reasons. So we talked about, you know, issues in the athletic community, but wrestlers have their own faction of mental health issues that are probably more particular to them. And, you know, I'm glad to hear that, you know, you've gone to therapy and and see the value of it. I think, you know, I just mentioned kind of restructuring or reframing a thought process, right? And I'll give you a great example when it comes to this. So a lot of wrestlers, might think that, you know, their image of, you know, being tough or, you know, being strong or needing to perform, you know, and and do a great job mentally, they might think that it's a sign of weakness to ask for help, right? And there's a lot of people in the athletic community because they're used to being great problem solvers and they're used to, you know, performing under pressure that feel like it's a sign of weakness or not being mentally tough to seek help. And the spin that I would put on that is the mindset that I want my athletes to have or my performers and clients to have is this growth mindset of I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to look for ways to improve. I'm always looking for opportunities to take my life and career to the next level. And if working with a performance psychologist or working with a mental health therapy can improve my life and ability to perform at a high level, why the hell would I not do that? You know, so I, I just that quick spin of like, you know, I'm not sure if this is a, a sign of strength to do this, changing that to I'm looking for any opportunity that I could use to get better. And I think when you take that mindset into life, you find that you open yourself up to more opportunities. You open yourself up to more people who could have a positive impact on your life. And you very, very quickly see positive results when you allow that to happen. And you know, Zach, it's it's interesting because I know that there's there are people listening right now who could utilize your services, who need your services. And whether they be the athletes themselves, whether it be uh, loved ones of athletes who want to reach out and kind of connect you with the athletes, whether it be promoters who want their entire locker room to to hear what you have to say. What is the best way that someone can get in touch with you? And, you know, figure out how to how to utilize your services. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm all over, you know, social media at this point, you know, between, you know, TikTok and Instagram. I also have a website, you know, for my company. So I would say, you know, if you're an organization or a company that wants to reach out, you know, my company is called Holistic Athlete. My website is holisticathlete.org. There's uh, plenty of places there for you to contact me and reach out, send me an email. We'll talk about it, set up a time to talk. If you're an individual, you could do that as well. But you could also find me on Instagram, TikTok. It's at it's at Zach Etter 16, Z-A-C-K-E-T-T-E-R-1-6. So I respond to every DM. I respond to every email. I'm a, you know not a very big company, so you're not going to get responded to by some intern. I, I handle all of those you know, direct contacts myself, because if I'm promoting, you know, personal relationship and professional development and growth and help, then I want to be the one that is directly answering, you know, those outreach attempts. So, you know, certainly open for, uh, for business for that. There's a variety of different ways that, you know, I provide services, whether that's, you know, group workshops and seminars or subjective one-on-one counseling sessions or more of a, you know, revised program over time. So there's many different ways to go about this from an individual or group standpoint. I have a good amount of experience with both, definitely with working with uh, wrestlers as well. 
So yeah, I mean, it, you know, no consultation is a bad idea, right? It's all free consultation. It's worth the time to just reach out and see if this is something that's interesting to you and, and think that it's something that might be able to be beneficial uh, for your, your job and your life. Great stuff there. Zach Etter, once again, appreciate you, brother. Thank you very much. Some positive, positive stuff and, and some tips that we all can learn from, but especially anyone who is in the sports or entertainment uh, lifestyle there. It's, it's, it's just so important and so much going on right now is a lot of challenges. I mean, we, we still are in the midst of a pandemic, global pandemic, and every day it's, it's something new, man. So just being able to stay focused and maintain, you know, maintain control of your life. And it really starts with your mental and emotional well-being. So, again, to have a professional like Zach Etter come on here and, and share the tips that he shared. I mean, it's just it's great. It's great. So, again, appreciate you there. You know, something happened. Something happened uh, this week, and it's not the first time it's happened. And everybody knows that I'm a guy that is very focused on the advocacy that I partake in in every aspect of life. You know, I'm a pretty consistent guy in that regard. Uh, I, I believe in equality. You know, I believe that people should be treated equally and, and, and held accountable based on who they are as people, like how they treat others, based on their performance, based on, you know, factors that are within their control. But I don't believe in people being marginalized or mistreated in any way, shape or form based on things that are outside of their control. So, you know, whether we're talking race, religion, um, you know, sexual orientation, gender, you know, these are all things that are not within our control. I believe that, you know, we're, we're born the way that we are. And even when it comes to religion, for instance, um, that's your relationship with a higher power. And I, I feel like that's just, you know, that's not something that you should be marginalized about. So... I'm very, I'm very laser focused when it comes to that stuff. And it doesn't matter what I'm talking about. I could be talking about sports and entertainment, you know, like pro wrestling. I could be talking about politics. It doesn't really matter. It's, I'm, it's the same talking points across the board. So I'm very critical at times. And everybody knows that. I think that's part of the reason why people enjoy listening to what I have to say. Cause whether they agree or disagree, you know, you're going to get an honest take on things, right? But something that gets lost in translation, and, and I take full responsibility for this, I think because people expect me to be critical of things, they miss when I positively highlight things. You know, I don't, I don't just complain about what's wrong. I actually do shout out what's right. But unfortunately, you know, maybe I'm not speaking loud enough about what's right. So that gets lost in translation. So, you know, I definitely want to make sure that I correct that issue. And, and I'm going to do that right now on something specific. Shout out to Cody Rhodes. Shout out to Thunder Rosa. And shout out to Sean Dean. You know, all these folks from AEW. They did something very special this week for the wonderful kids at uh, West Middle School down in Georgia. They have a pro wrestling club. It's an after school pl uh, club where the kids get to watch wrestling and discuss it. You know, sometimes uh, the wrestlers will Zoom with the kids and, and discuss things with them. The kids can ask questions. The wrestlers encourage the kids to stay in school, get the homework done, you know, continue to be productive. Uh, it's just, it's really cool. It's really cool because you're spreading wrestling fandom, which is always important, but you're also encouraging kids to do the right thing, which is most important. And, you know, wrestlers are larger than life characters, man. They're, they're real life superheroes and, and they mean something to those of us who are fans and especially the kids. It's so important to be able to have some type of personal interaction with wrestlers as much as you can. And, and, it, and it's so important, you know, if you get a chance to see them live at an event, which, you know, let's face it, these events are pretty expensive. 
So not everybody can afford to do that. So if you get an opportunity to attend a live event, I mean, that's it's life changing stuff, man. It was for me. So I know it means something to these kids. And, you know, Cody, Thunder Rosa, Sean Dean, they, they've they been very supportive and, and helpful, especially to the kids over at West Middle School. So I got to shout that out. Just appreciate you for uh, continuing to do the right thing. It's not the first time and I'm sure it won't be the last. Uh, those three individuals in particular, they, they have a habit of helping others and especially the kids. So I, I have to make sure that I shout that out. That's very important. And I want the world to know that they do the right thing in that regard. So again, Cody, Sean Dean, Thunder Rosa, shout out. But I want, you know, and, and speaking of Cody, I mean, again, I mentioned a little bit earlier in, in the episode, but uh, this week, Cody had a match on Dynamite with Andrade, and it was a, it was a solid match. You know, these two guys, they know what they're doing, and, you know, put them in the ring together, they're going to make it happen. It's good stuff. It's really good stuff. But unfortunately, there was a spot at the end, and thank God it was at the end, but there was a spot at the end that was, uh, it left me kind of perplexed a little bit. It left me uh, scratching my head a little bit because, you know, in my opinion, it was there were some risks that were taken at the end of this match that were unnecessary and dangerous. And it got me to thinking just about responsibility in general, not just in wrestling, but in life. And what happens when you are responsible for others? You know, how does that affect the way that you do anything and 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 really how does that affect what you should not be doing not what you can't do but what you should not be doing right think about that for a second and what we can use pro wrestling as the main example here um think about all the things that you see that negatively impact the industry specifically There are so many unnecessary injuries that happen in wrestling because today's wrestler feels like in order to entertain the fans, they have to do these things that put themselves and their opponents in some very serious, dangerous situations, right? I mean, there's a wrestler out there who, you know, God bless them, but they have a they have a very difficult time during a match doing a moonsault, but they keep trying to do this moonsault. And I, you know, it's a moonsault. And and for those of you who are not up on your wrestling terms per se, because there's a lot of folks who listen to the show who, you know, they're very casual wrestling fans, not necessarily wrestling fans. They wouldn't identify themselves as wrestling fans. Um, but a moonsault is basically a backflip. So a person does a backflip. And the idea is they're supposed to land on their opponent. They're somewhere between their waist and their neck is supposed to land pretty much, you know, between the the opponent's waist and neck. So they're in a pinning position. That's a moonsault. And you can do that off of the top rope or you can do that just standing. You know, the opponent is behind you and you do a backflip and you're supposed to land belly to belly, basically. Right. There's a wrestler who continues to try to do a moonsault and they cannot stick this landing during a match. It's very rare that they stick the landing. Unfortunately, they land on their face. They land on their head. Their chin lands in an awkward position on the opponent. So, you know, you could be jamming your neck when you do that. Um, Sometimes their knees land in the opponent's midsection or face. Sometimes the you know, the person doing the moonsault, they're, they're landing knees first when they they complete the rotation. So they're messing up their knees, their own knees. Um, it's just, it's something that they just are not, it's, you can't do it. It's just not something that's, that's it's not something that you, you can do, right? And it's okay. <laughs> Why did we get to the point where everybody has to do a moonsault? Or everybody has to dive outside of the ring. You see, you see how many people who dive outside of the ring and they end up jamming their heads into the into the the ground, which that's cement, by the way. 
busting their face, knocking their teeth out, things like this, right? Breaking their necks, literally. Or they're hurting their opponents because their opponent is not able to get the timing down to catch them when they're trying to do these these aerial assaults, these dives, these flippy dippy, skippy moves outside of the ring. It's just ridiculous, right? Why is it that way? Why why do these these younger wrestlers and even older wrestlers feel like they have to do this? Because somebody with influence decided that it's something that you need to do in order to entertain the fans because the fans, without it, the fans are not going to be entertained. You're not giving them their money's worth. And then everybody starts doing it to the point where you'll see more, you'll see more moonsaults. So more backflips, you'll see more dives. Then you see headlocks, right? A headlock is a basic move in a, in a wrestling match that you can really hurt somebody doing that. It's a vice, right? Take your arm, you put, you, you put it around somebody's head and you squeeze. It's not hard to understand how that could hurt somebody. G- give it a shot. And depending on where you do it, you know, you put it where their jaw is. There's a lot of nerve endings there. Or you put it where their temple is. There's a lot of nerve endings there. If you do it around their neck, now that's a choke. But this is a move that is so versatile and it's believable. And here's the best part. It's low risk. If you're a professional and you're trained, it's a move that can be effective. It can look great. It can look devastating, but you can do it without hurting someone. Why do we see more dives than we see headlocks in wrestling today? It doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense. When did we get to the point where we've convinced this generation of wrestler that they got to jump outside of the ring onto an opponent who's standing on cement? And if they don't do that, then the fans won't be entertained. It's crazy. When do we get to the point where you have to do a full backflip and land on your opponent, a moonsault, despite the fact that if you don't make the rotation properly, you can hurt yourself and you can hurt them too. It's crazy. We, we've, we've allowed the ante to be upped up, up too much. And unfortunately, it can end in some very serious tragedy, right? So let's take it a step further. Cody Rhodes is in a match with Andrade and, and, and Brandy gets in the ring and, and pours lighter fluid on a table and then sets it on fire. And then Cody grabs Andrade by the neck. Andrade was facing away from him. Cody had him in a, in a reverse headlock and then flips Andrade over. So he does a moonsault while bringing Andrade over for a moonsault as well. Cody lands on the fire back first. Andrade's face is very close to the fire. And then Cody, after he lands, he turns around and pins Andrade. And as he's pinning Andrade, Cody is still on fire. He's not wearing a shirt. There's stuff all over Cody's back, which it looks like it was the material from the the table that burnt off and stuck to his back. So guaranteeing, you know, third and fourth degree burns here. Just, Just completely ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. And I understand that we all want to do cool things. We all want to show that we can do stuff and we all want to stand out regardless of of what line of work you're in. And I understand in wrestling, you know, it's a performance, it's entertainment, it's athleticism. You want to, to show the fans that you're cool and you can do stuff, right? But just because you can do something, that doesn't mean you should do something, especially If you, like Cody Rhodes, are an executive, Cody is an executive vice president of All Elite Wrestling. That means that he is in charge of stuff and in charge of people, (laughs) right? And and we can't take this lightly, folks, because here's the issue here. In WWE, when Mick Foley was jumping off of cages and and going through fire and doing foolish things like he had done in Japan and everywhere else. That was bad. And the adults in the room should have never let that, let that happen because it was dangerous and was sick. It was twisted, irresponsible. But you got to remember that Mick Foley at, at the end of the day was just an independent contractor. He's just, he's just somebody who's part of the staff, part of the team. Right. And even though he was a veteran, he's still, he's just part of the team. 
when Shane McMahon or Vince McMahon or Stephanie McMahon starts doing that sort of stuff, now we got a problem. And in some cases, they did do that stuff. I mean, you saw Shane diving and jumping off at things. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Irresponsible. So seeing Cody do what he did last night, here's my question. What happens now for everybody who is influenced by Cody, especially in that company? You know, if, 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 you know, Jane or, 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 or Joe wrestler in AEW sees Cody Rose, the executive vice president doing, doing backflips through tape, through flaming tables, they're going to do it because, you know, he's the example of, of how you're supposed to do things and he's successful. So it's like, okay, I guess that's what I have to do in 2021 or in 2022 to entertain the fans. As an executive, as a manager of people, there are things that even if you can do it, you should not do it. And it is irresponsible to do it. I'm telling you, you are responsible for the safety and well-being of the people that you are leading. And it's crazy because Andrade's in that match. And Andrade, you know, he's just an independent contractor. So technically speaking, Cody Rhodes is is one of his bosses. Andrade's face was so close to that fire. It was crazy. And even when Cody had Andrade pinned, Andrade had to help Cody the fire go out by hitting Cody in the back and stuff while he's being pinned, by the way. Right. Who knows what kind of hair product either one of them have in their head. You know, most most hair product is oil based, right? That stuff catches on fire very easily <laughs> and it's very difficult to put out, right? Can you imagine if poor Andrade's hair caught on fire in that situation? What would you do? It's crazy. It's crazy. So, you know, and, and, and look, I'm not trying to give Cody a hard time, but I'm, what, what I'm pointing out here is Cody. You're an executive vice president. You're a husband. You are a a new father. You are a leader of people. You don't want to be the guy that is doing things like this. And then others who are who are following your lead start doing that sort of stuff, too. And they permanently injure themselves or worse. Right. Can you imagine if somebody on the AEW roster does some kind of crazy table, flaming table spot, and then it ends their career or possibly ends their life. Who needs that? We need to discourage that sort of stuff in pro wrestling. We don't want to encourage that. And I don't care who it is, especially an executive. I mean, come on, man. We got to do better than that. And it's funny that, you know, we had Zach on and we were talking about different things there, but it's is this a situation in which Cody feels like in order to, to compete, especially with the modern expectation of the modern wrestling fan, he has to do these sort of dangerous stunts in order to continue to appeal to the modern fan? That is a problem if he feels that way. That is a major issue. And it's something that we all have to do our part to correct as fans our expectations need to not be unrealistic to the degree where the wrestlers literally got to set themselves on fire just to get a reaction out of us. Because here's the, here's the issue. How would anyone feel if Cody could never wrestle again after that? Come on. As a fan, how would you feel about that? We're making these folks feel like they have to literally put themselves in harm's way in order to keep us entertained. That is sick. It is wrong. And it needs to change. And for Cody Rhodes and any other wrestler who is also an executive, you need to consider how your actions affect the rest of the locker room and the rest of the industry as a whole. Because you bet your bottom dollar, someone is going to replicate everything that you just did. They're going to do their own version of it. And you bet your bottom dollar, somebody's going to get hurt doing that. There's no question about it. Why do you want to be the person responsible for that? Come on. Listen, I don't like some of the decision making that goes on in AEW. That's clear. I like I don't like some of the decision making that goes on in every wrestling promotion for the record. 
But I understand that Cody Rose is, is a person who, you know, I don't feel he's a bad person. I think he's a good person. And I think he is a kind hearted person. I think he he understands right from wrong. I don't think he's a fool. But I do believe that he could use someone like Zach to unpack some of these things that would cause him to put himself on national TV to get whipped with belts to the point where his back is all torn up with welts or do, you know, thumbtack matches or, you know, throw himself through a flaming table and risk his life and that of, of Andrade and the referee and everybody else who's in the building. Somebody needs to have a conversation with this guy and figure out what, why do you feel you need to do this and what can we do to kind of correct that? And that goes for everybody else who does that, that sort of stuff. These deathmatch wrestlers, all these folks who feel they need to do these stunts. It's out of control. In 2022, I, I, I really hope and I pray for health and prosperity of all wrestlers in the industry. All of these death defying stunts, these dives, these flaming tables, these barbed wires, these light tubes, all this stuff. I, I, I pray that all this stuff goes away. Let's just get back to what, it, what pro wrestling is supposed to be a simulation of, right? Pro wrestling is supposed to be a fight. I have never seen someone set a table on fire during a fight and then throw themselves through it. It's never happened. <laughs> so to even do that is just ridiculous. Come on, guys. We've gone too far. Let's dial it back. And and listen, I know that this can be corrected, and I know that we can get back to what matters most. Great storytelling. All right? So, again, my best. Hope Cody's okay. Hope Andrade's okay. And fellas, listen, that's enough. And everybody else out there, that's enough. Once again, Duke loves wrestling on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram. Duke loves wrestling at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. I mean, did... When it comes to these death defying stunts, is enough enough? Am I onto something here? Or or can you just not get enough of it and you don't care about the safety and well being of these performers and therefore you just want to keep seeing it happen? Let me know what you think. I'll I'll, I'll absolutely respond next week to what you have to say. Be kind to yourselves and be kind to others. Appreciate you all, folks. See you next week. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're definitely out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.